Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Journey podcast. Today I have Stacey McNaby with me. Hi Stacey, how are you? I'm good, Rebecca. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good, thanks. Really well indeed. Right, so we've been chatting for a while and yes. you're the founder of uh, the social media coach or the social coach, I think it's called, isn't it? The social coach, yeah. Um, yes. So I launched that in July this year, uh-huh. just recently. And how did that come about? Because you, you've been in business for yourself for a while, but this is new for you. What happened there? Um, so I've always done coaching for social media. I've always been a bit of a social media geek, to be fair. I'm really interested um, in the whole psychological side behind what people engage with, um, what the different platforms are doing. Um, and yeah, I've always found it really, really, really interesting. And equally how powerful it is for businesses and how powerful it's been for me through business. So I always done that in between my other um, business. But I kind of felt like an imposter doing it as a business because it almost felt like it was wasn't as difficult. I wasn't really finding it really difficult to learn about it and to coach people on it. So I thought, right, that's too easy. So that shouldn't be a business. Um but eventually, people kept saying to me, Stacey, why do you not do this as a business? Why do you not do some more? Um, and then it was kind of confusing with my other business. I was doing a bit of that. But um, so I built my other business up to, the, it just runs itself now. It's, right. it's order. Um, but I absolutely love coaching and I love social media. So I thought, right, now's the time to take the plunge. Uh, that's fascinating that it was so easy. You didn't think it was a skill that people would pay money to buy I speak to so many coaches and consultants who go well surely everybody knows this yeah and it I think it's the biggest thing that holds coaches and consultants back actually Um, yeah yeah Um, it's bizarre it's because you 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 do this every single day and you read up on it and you learn about it and you're so in it that when you speak to somebody else, and even just a simple, simplest task with it, you, you expect that everybody knows it. But then the more people I speak to, the more like, how do I do that? And I'm like, oh, right, so you, so you don't know how to do that, but I can show you. And they're so grateful that you've showed them how to do that one small thing that you think that everybody just, you just assume that everybody knows how to do. So, yeah. All right, so that's not where life began, because you did, was it an events course events management you started out in so tell us how you ended up working for yourself from events management okay so um I went to college um I didn't I didn't know what I wanted to do I just knew I wanted to do something self-employed for no other reason that when I was employed I was in my workplace and thought if they done this this could be better if they done this and I was constantly and I still do walk in places and think and what if they done this? That would be quite cool, or maybe that would be a good idea, or what? So I was constantly full of these ideas and this ambition and this drive that I didn't really feel I got that out of my own job. So I tried to piece together all the things that I liked from doing from each job that I had over the years, and I thought, like, I love helping people. I love being in different scenarios all the time. So I was like, right, I'll do events. So um, I started doing events, and. Um, it was great. It was it was busy, but I became a complete rabbit in the headlights. I was I was on my own, a single mm. mom. My confidence was quite low, and then I was going to business business networking events and felt like a complete imposter. Um, so I didn't know how to run a business. I knew how to do the events, but I didn't know how yeah. to run a business. So then I thought, right, how many other women are sitting here that maybe don't have a lot of money, don't really have much time, don't have confidence, but don't really have that guidance or place where they feel that they can just be authentically themselves so I was driving my car one day and I just got this idea I was like right I need to bring together a community of women where they can network with each other they can have events and come together grow their confidence grow their knowledge um, and then that's where that where boss girls be that uh, and I love the name boss girls utter genius now you have a huge following for boss girls don't you yeah yeah quite big um, it seems to 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 grow and grow and it's good because some people who are yeah where I live they also um they know what boss girls is so it's quite good um but it's obviously just grown and people know what it is instead of just being me yeah now stop hiding your light under a bushel Stacey how big is the community for boss girls come on 
I think in total we've got our online community works out to about forty seven thousand people. Yeah. So yeah. Um, um, yeah. and that's all through organic social media. Um that that has grown. So yeah, that's which is phenomenal. And for those people outside of Scotland um, and outside of the UK, just tell people how small the community you come from is exactly. Well, you can't walk to the shop, which is two minutes away, without bumping into at least five people that you know. It is a really, really small community that everybody knows everybody. Um, so yeah it's much bigger the community that we've got and where i live is a lot lot smaller than the community with boss girls so it's, it's definitely grown it's outnumbered it's my own place of living so yeah yeah and and again i don't know whether you've thought about this or aware of this but there are so many people sitting in small towns and villages across the world saying you know how, how can i build a community I'm, I'm you know i'm not in london i'm not in new york i'm you know i'm not in any major suburban area so how you've said you built that organically how yeah. long did it take and what did it take to build it organically so it took three years to get to there um, right. and I think if I had more knowledge at the start it could have grown a lot more um, mm -hmm. there was a pandemic in between that as well so there was kind of a, a bit of breaks in it but um, it took three years to get to, to where we are and it, it grows by the day grows by the day right and was that through Facebook or Instagram through Facebook Instagram and TikTok the three ah. places so yeah so so uh, with the internet uh, there's just uh, uncapped opportunities and there's so many people you can connect with we have got people um, from America, from Ireland, they're predominantly in Scotland um, and yeah. England. But yeah, I've spoken to people from the other side of the world, from through through Boss Girls, and because we have the internet and because we have social media, so it just shows it doesn't matter how small it is that you live or how mm -hmm. many people that you, that you if you only have a small group of friends that you know, there's just endless opportunities as long as you've got access to the internet. Yeah, I agree. So clearly. That's quite a skill you've got there. And I completely understand why you're now sharing that knowledge and expertise and putting a value to it. What kind of businesses and what kind of people are you helping? Um, so with Boss Girls, it's, we've got our small to medium sized businesses and new starts um, that, that join us. With the social coach, um, it's people who, again, in business and I'm equally doing a social media managers course, which is for people who are already social media managers or are looking to take that path as well um, mm -hmm. and to teach them how to manage people's social media accounts because it is such a growing industry. So yeah. a range of a range of people, definitely. I think that course is brilliant. Yeah, um, I may have somebody to send on that course actually to you because you, you, it's the only way you can't be everywhere at once, can't can you? And you can't work one to one with clients everywhere. So you've got to teach them or at least the people that they engage with how to do this. Definitely. Um, yeah. Have you been into schools yet to teach this? So that's my next step. I've had a couple of people contact me um, about going to schools. Um, so with, your, with the course that I'm doing, it it just kind of, I think at one point with social media, people didn't really take it seriously or people didn't look at it as if it was a job or you just post mm. pictures online or you post videos. And all. But I think now it's people are starting to realise the impact that social media has on businesses and the importance of having people either in their team or that they outsource to that has that, that that knowledge that can the drive their business forward because the good thing about social media is it is um it is free and there's yeah. endless opportunities so you can connect with people all over the world so if businesses aren't utilizing their social media then they're potentially leaving a lot of money sat on the table and opportunities as well yeah yeah i agree um i think obviously my 14 year old daughter teaches me how to use tiktok um and and critiques all the videos that we're currently posting and tells me where i'm going wrong and uh, do you know oh, yeah. she's the expert I, I am not the expert at all and and neither do i want to be the expert either there's other stuff that i do um out of the platforms that are out there which one do you think has got the best future potential for business 
Um, it does depend on the business, but I mm. think one of the leading platforms at the moment is going to be your TikTok um, mm. and then YouTube. People tend to prefer really short form videos at the moment that are mm. entertaining them. Um, but then equally, you have different generations who are still on Facebook who won't go near TikTok. So it does depend on your business, but the future going forward um, is definitely your short form video um platforms your tiktok your your instagram reels and your youtube but tiktok's definitely my favorite one yeah now there are some large businesses who who really get quite ah, i don't know het up stressed about you know getting professional videographers in and things like that is that really necessary or can you just do something on your phone even as a large business and that's okay what's the consensus the, I mean, the quality of the cameras on phones these days, you, you don't need to have a media team coming in. I mean, that's not saying that there's not a value to having a media team. I, I get content done for myself, but day to day growing your business and using your social platforms. If you have got a, a, a half decent mobile phone, an Android, an iPhone, um, then all you need to know is how to have good lighting, which we've got, or purchase somewhat of a ring light um, and then and go from there but I think too many people in business um, we kind of overthink it too much and think oh, I've not got I need to pay for a media team or I've not got a camera set up or I don't have this I don't have that but actually a lot of people who are watching it don't really care about that as long as it looks good quality and um, and they're showing up then that's what people are interested they don't care that's a, a necessarily that's a media team that's done it or you've done it off your iPhone Hi. Let's get back to the psychology because I look at we're on TikTok now um, and I'm like, why have we had 3,300 likes for that video and only 300 for that video? I'm like, I have no idea what the difference is. So what's the psychology behind the stuff that people engage with? It's not just kittens, is it? <laughs> it's, not, it's not just kittens, no. Well, people tend to tune into a kind of emotion they buy off emotion or that they're more interested in something that strikes up an emotion with them. So um, sometimes when you're taking content, if you record three videos, you'll maybe record two and think, right, they're going to be the best ones. And then you just mm. do one off the cuff. And it usually happens the one off the cuff is the one that people are like, oh, so there is, sometimes it's really hard to tell like what do people like, but if what you're posting can can ping an emotion in somebody then there's more likely or that they're going to want to engage with it um which is what really good about short form videos is that you can make yourself it can be funny it can be entertaining it can be shocking you can add music in the background so again that also goes into that person's like mindset when they're when they're taking in your post so there's there's different reasons why different posts take off it there was a guy once who literally just went on a skateboard and was drinking a, a juice with some 80s tune on and it went viral and it was just a simple video of him recording himself but because it was a feel-good song and the guy just looked like he was chilled and he was on his skateboard so many people were like that's amazing and the, and the guy actually ended up on tv shows and everything after that which is crazy. did he yeah that yeah. is and he's off his off his phone on a skateboard um so it's just making sure that you're being authentic and knowing who your audience is and really being able to see right, how, what, how do they feel, what kind of things do we do that can align with them and, and just start posting content out there. And ultimately, you'll know what they like to see because you'll see what gets the most engagement. And sometimes it isn't what you think it is. It's something mm -hmm. completely different. So the best way to find out is to really know who you're trying to speak to online um, and, and, and put it out there because I think... When it comes to social media, a lot of people get so caught up in the words algorithm and strategy. Mm. They let that kind of dampen their confidence. When what we need really need to remember, it is just human connection. It's just the middle point between you and another human. So how do we connect to them? How do we yeah. show what we solve for them or how we can make them feel? I, I like that. How, how do you want your potential customers and clients to feel? I think, I think that's really good. And you can only turn up as yourself yeah because if they turn up to buy from you and they find out you're somebody different then they're going to be really disappointed um yeah I think I think that makes a lot of sense and that oh that word strategy oh my god people get really upset with that word don't they 
Oh God, yeah. I think it just put people puts people completely off. They're like, oh, I don't know yeah. what that is. I can't do that. Or they they definitely overthink it. But yeah. sometimes, yeah, you just step away from these words that you hear all the time and think, right, how do I how do I want people to feel when they see my content? And being yeah. authentic, hundred yeah. times the time, being authentic. Yeah, I think I think that's like. If, if anybody's listening to this and they're thinking about putting content out there, I think that's the question to ask themselves, isn't it? How do I want them to feel? And that actually is your strategy, isn't yeah. it? I mean, it, that, exactly. that's it in a that's nutshell. It. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I've had two businesses recently get in touch going, our, our senior managers are really tangled up in developing strategies. So I've actually developed a course called strategic thinking made easy to try and demystify it and go do you know what it's just having a plan yeah and then doing the plan that's it exactly, <laughs> exactly yeah and it, it does it it creates so much stress and yeah. I mean, people think oh I can't do that I don't know what that is and they just they just avoid it or then we then start looking for excuses of reasons why we can't do it because oh, I don't have the right strategy or or people will say well I've posted three times this week and I've, I've not had a client. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It, I love the fact that it's taken you three years to get to 47,000 people yeah. for boss girls. Um, yeah. And that people think that they post two pictures or post twice on LinkedIn and go, well, where are my clients? I'm like, no, you have to turn up every week, even if it's only once a week. You know, yeah. it's better more more than that. But you know, if even you can do once a week, every week consistently with the consistent voice, consistent messages, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I say to people, if you had, if you walk the same journey to work every day, and you see a guy sitting on a bench with a bag of Lego, you wouldn't really pay attention. But the next day, you walk past and he's there again, but he's built a bit more Lego. You would maybe look and then keep walking. But mm -hmm. every day, the more you walk past him, he's there, and he's building more and more Lego. The more, the more you're almost going to look for him on your journey to work and you're going to be interested in what he's doing. It's the same with your social media and showing up for your business. If if people just don't show up or they show up once or twice, then people aren't really going to be that engaged with them because they're not being consistent. So the more you show up, the more people are going to be intrigued in you and intrigued in what you're doing. That is a perfect analogy. May I steal that analogy, Stacey? Yes, please do. <laughs> please do. Because that explains it beautifully um yeah I, I'm absolutely going to use that that's great okay so you only started um the social coach business in July how's it going amazing so when I started in July um after a lot of imposter syndrome um I, I did still hold myself back actually and I had a, a meeting with Angela McKillop who I'm going to her event on Sunday and she we had a coffee, it was just a coffee, and she was like, can I say something to you, Stacey? And I was like, yeah, she was like, I want to see more of you. I want to see you start showing up more. And for me, it was almost like she knew what I was subconsciously feeling right. and that I was holding back because of this imposter syndrome. And since that conversation, um, I have just went at it 100%. Good. Um, but for the first five weeks, I felt like I was talking to a brick wall again, but it, that's how it feels at the start. Yeah. But then fast forward five weeks, I'm now the busiest that I've ever been with the, with the business. Um, I've been asked to go and speak at an event in London. I've been asked to speak at an event in Edinburgh. Brilliant. But for the first five, six weeks, Rebecca, I was like, oh, my God, this is what it feels like. I forgot because I'm so used to being in with boss girls when, you, when you're so engaged with people. But then it just, I just kept being consistent and it just suddenly started to like all come at once, which is amazing. Now, Tell me, this imposter feeling of like an imposter, has it gone now? It ha well, it has gone. It still Good. comes in waves. It still comes in waves. And I always say to people, um, I heard it on a podcast before that, when you feel imposter syndrome, it means you're stepping out of your comfort zone. Yeah, and that's, that's all it is. So if you, if you don't feel imposter syndrome, you're not, imposter syndrome, you're not growing. So embrace it when you feel it. Um, so... I give myself that prep talk sometimes, but it's definitely, you know, since I had that conversation with Angela, it was almost like that's all I needed to hear from somebody with a kick up yeah. the backside and be like, come on, like you've got this. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and since then, I, I'll have it in little waves as I think as a lot of us kind of do, like, oh, 
But um, it's not holding me back anymore. I'm still getting up every day and saying, right, okay, let's let's do this. What's next? So yeah. I've interviewed so many entrepreneurs who run businesses large and small. I mean, some really huge businesses. Um, and if you're not feeling nervous about putting yourself forward, you're just not doing it right, basically. Because yeah. like you say, you're not growing. If you're too yeah. comfortable, you're not growing. Your business isn't growing. You aren't developing. Um, and so I, I'd like I'd like to rephrase that I actually don't believe in imposter syndrome I don't think it's a thing I just think yeah. it's nervous excitement yeah. and that's all, yeah. that's all I think it is and and once you realize that everybody experiences male female young old don't care who you are or where you're from everybody feels it at some point in their life unless they're a psychopath you yeah. know yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly yeah so yeah. yeah, that's definitely a much better way of putting it. So I'll, yeah. I'll keep that when I'm if I have that when I have that kind of feeling again. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's important you have it because if if you don't have it, I think you would get careless and sloppy. I think it's it's a really important feeling to note, you know, and, and go, am I doing it right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's go ahead. It's it's kind of a really nice checking system actually um and yeah sometimes you'll fall flat on your face because we're human and that's what happens but you pick yourself up dust yourself off and start again all right so So, yeah good good to have it good to have it i'll remember what you said i'll keep that going forward yeah so those first five to six weeks again i want to share with our audience because there's plenty of people going through that those first five to six weeks where there's like tumbleweed going across your desk nobody's yeah. engaging nobody's responding I'm like is it me and then it suddenly starts to happen how did you keep yourself going and for some people it might be longer it could be months that that happens for and it was yeah. for me definitely yeah. how did you keep yourself going by knowing that it, it, it felt right what I was doing and I like uh, and really, if they say if you, if you need to love what you do, and I genuinely do love what I do, and I, 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 see, I can't put this out to people and say, be consistent, be this, be this, if I'm not doing it myself. Um, and that, that did take me five to six weeks, but off the back of that, if anybody's listening and they're just starting a business for the first time, that could take you five to six months. It could take yeah. you longer. When I started my first business, it took me longer. I'm in a fortunate position now where I have my first business so people kind of know who I am a bit and I have done coaching in between that with people Mm -hmm. and so that kind of gave me a bit of a quicker start but you just have to keep you have to really believe in what you're doing and envision your higher self so how you want to your 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 life to look like and what you want to be doing and think right you I have to give 110 percent into this and then like hard work hard work will always pay off it doesn't yeah. matter. And I don't even like calling it hard work, but consistent, consistent work will always pay off. Um, so yeah. if you really want something and it's right for you, you don't you won't know everything. You never will know everything. You'll always be learning, you'll always be making mistakes, but you have to keep showing up and, and you'll know in your gut what feels right for you. And that 110 percent felt right in my gut for me. Um and sometimes I need to remind myself that I have built up mm-hmm. a, a, a big social media presence organically. I have worked with other businesses I do spend so much time like each week learning about social media and constantly learning because it constantly updates um mm. so just reminding myself like where I'm at and what I know and this is what I should be doing so yeah. yeah yeah I, I yeah completely agree and I think even just turning up you know we've talked about consistency but so many people just don't turn up yeah they will shy but- away yeah, they shy away. And I walk past like three cafes sometimes when I walk the, my dog in the morning to get to the one that's furthest away from me. The three I walk past aren't open between eight and half eight in the morning when the parents are doing the school run. Um, and when, you know, tradespeople are after a coffee and a roll or whatever, or just before they go to work. The one that's furthest away from me is consistently open at half past eight in the morning, every single day, apart from Sunday and when they open at nine. But I know that that's the one I go to because he just shows up. 
Yeah, exactly. And, and that's a really good point as well, because I, I say to people as well, why people will often judge their business on how many likes they're getting on social media. Mm -hmm. But over those five, six weeks of me consistently posting, there was people watching what I was doing. Yeah. And they would reach out to me. So it's just like you walk in past these coffee shop, you're saying, well, they're not open, they're not open. So, and, and I would be keep posting and posting and people would message me and say, I've been following you for a while now, or I've been meaning to reach out to you. If you aren't consistent and you aren't showing up, these people don't have don't have any journey to follow. They won't get to know you at all. So just because people aren't purchasing, buying from you or messaging you right away, it doesn't mean that at some point they will, because it might not just be quite the time for them. Yeah. But if you show up and be consistent, then it never will be the time with them and you. Yeah. Totally, totally. So, right, you, you've got this business, Social Coach. Where, Where is it heading? Where do you want to take it? So what I want to do is that I want to get my social media managers course out there as much as possible to help build the confidence and knowledge of people who are already social media managers, but equally um, people who want to start their own career path of being a social media manager Um it comes from a business point of view and a personal point of view as well. When I was in a position where I didn't want to work, be employed, I wanted to work from home around my children because I had that whole mum guilt. Um, and I think this this course and having this career will give people that flexibility of not having to work in the nine to five or yeah. people who get that anxiety on a Sunday before work. Yeah. Um, so these people who they think potentially social media is something for them, it gives them a really good start that they're not just going into the, the, the industry guessing and learning as they go it kind of really helps them from the start with their confidence and their knowledge it saves them so much time and money from, yeah. from the opposite um, and then second to that getting and working with businesses who I know are really good um, I, I know businesses are really good but I look on their social media and it doesn't reflect it um, and people spend so much time two and a half hours a day I believe, on social media and if they're looking for a hotel or a, a restaurant or they're looking for somewhere they will judge you off what they see on their social media yeah. if joe blogs next door has got a bit of social media presence they might not be what you are but they're going to go to them because they their first impression of them it looks it looks much better so yeah. working with businesses to say your social media accounts free with, with the right um, consistency and strategy that we put around it you could build your business up um, to be to be fully booked or to take it to the levels you want. It, we're an example of that. I operate from my office in my house. We've got clients on the west coast of America. You know. Hi, you're back, Stacey. I'm back. Sorry, it froze yeah. there. I was like, oh, <laughs> the, joy, the joys of internet. Yeah, it's, a, it's good. It's good when it, unless it has a glitch. What's oh, glitched again? It's Phil, isn't it? Right. Okay. Hang on. I think we're back on now. I've got you. Got you back. <laughs> it just. Do you know what it was? It was um, my phone rang silently and it interrupted because oh. I'm linked to 5G. We'll that's cut fine. that out, Stacey. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> so, um, if your business, so social coach, if it had a personality or a character, how would you describe it? Um, I would say the person that would be very fun simple and like a good a good a good energy mm. yeah energy. yeah I... like i want to take away the complications of social media and let people know it can be fun it's a yeah. so place to be sociable um so like let's make that fun it doesn't need to be this like scary thing that some people think or avoid it or or people say i hear all the time is um I'm too old for social media, that's one, or um, I don't have the time for social media, but then they're equally stressed about not having a full diary 
with, with it. So it's not that they don't have the time, it's just that they don't have the knowledge and the confidence for their social media. So if they can nail that, then, then they will definitely have the time because they'll see the benefits they get from it. If we have managed, Stacey, to get my 55-year-old brother, okay, Mr. Stuck in His Ways, to embrace TikTok. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. My favourite channel. I love then that. He's finally realised, because he loves performing, he's finally realised there's a whole new audience that he can perform to. Yeah. Um. And and he just loves it. He just is knocking those videos out left, right, and center, and he absolutely adores it. So if he can be converted, anybody can be converted. <laughs> well, this is it. You just you just don't know who's out there as well and who's watching what you've out there. I think um, a lot of people who don't live in big cities often think about their business and think about the people that's just around them and think, oh, people this and that. But actually, your brother's a fine example. So there's a whole new audience out there that which is could take you all over the world so there's endless opportunities um, and even if you you have a like a, a business that's maybe service based or it's like it's like a, a restaurant we think well what's the point but I've seen people and I'm not kidding on TikTok travel up from England to yeah. come to a place in in Glasgow and all they sell is slush puppies and yeah. slush puppies aren't really that good they're not anything special but people because they've seen it on TikTok it becomes a trend and people yeah. take TikTok videos and they drive up from Liverpool to um, to, to to Glasgow. So Ruby, Ruby, my daughter, at one stage, I can't remember, it was last year or the year before, she said, Mum, can we go to Wakey Wines? I said, what the hell's Wakey Wines? She said, it's a wine shop in Wakefield. I was like, why would we want to go there? It's on TikTok. It's on TikTok. <laughs> and people, like, will, people will do it. Yeah, they'll bypass so many businesses to get to that one business because they've seen it on TikTok and it's cool to be there because of TikTok. Yeah. She's, um, she, there's a guy like that, one of these dessert shops that has sprung up recently and he, he's hilarious and he dances. Um, yeah. So he dances in his shop. Um, there's not a lot about desserts. I've no idea what he sells apart from desserts. Um, and he keeps going viral and he's like, mom, look at him. He's hilarious. <laughs> he's prime example. Exactly. And you and you get I think it's Ryanair and they jump on all the trends where they're having a laugh. They're not actually selling their flights, but yeah. what they are doing is getting really big brand um, recognition from people. So and then the flip side to that people think I'm what that puts them off TikTok is I don't want to be mm. on there dancing and doing this. You can do whatever you want because yeah. that may attract one audience, but what you do will attract a different audience. So you don't have to you can be on there and just show your personality and people yeah. will be be drawn to that um there's yeah there's endless opportunities for everybody on it i love it i love it okay so people can find you where stacy how do they track you down so they can find me on social media um under um stacy the social coach um my website is currently being developed at the moment but that will be um, available soon and also um if you're a woman in business then um boss girls academy can be found across all platforms Facebook, Brilliant. Instagram, TikTok, um, we're across all them and, and touching on threads a wee bit as well. But yeah, so social media and um, yeah, that's our, that's our main places you'll find us, of course. I'm pretty sure we're following you on most platforms, but I'll have to double check. Um, yeah. Listen, thank you so much. That was brilliant. Really enjoyed interviewing you, Stacey, and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much.